Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, thank you to uh, Penny for allowing me to come along and talk here to you on French Roots and Branches. Now, this is a book that actually follows on very nicely from the question that the lady in pink there placed, is how to expand your vocabularies. Um, so following on from Agnes's great talk about trying to get people to understand the grammar, then the next bit is to try and grow uh, the voc vocabularies. And the tool that I'm going to talk about is a new book called French Book and Branches, which is in preparation. Now, this was actually produced by, um, by Gareth Jones and is now being uh, edited by his wife, Helen Jones, because unfortunately he deceased. But she um, has had a neck operation, is in Cyprus, recovering, and has asked me as the publisher to come along and give a talk to you. So please, um, I apologize in that I do not have any academic experience within the teaching profession at all. I must say I am bilingual in English and German, having been brought up that way. So the book I'm going to be talking about is French Roots and Branches, and the thing to remember, it's a new tool for teachers and students of French, and it's aimed at young adults onwards who already have a grasp of basic vocabulary and of grammar. So what are the aspects? We've just talked about having some knowledge of uh, grammar. It's trying to expand the vocabulary, uh, trying to expand the range of understanding of the topic that you've got um, ahead of you. Now, one of the advantages we have, especially with older students, as opposed to young students at school, is that often they're actually doing it on a self-motivational basis. Nowadays, the languages are not necessarily compulsory at school um, or further on at, at uh, university. So when people are choosing languages, they actually want to learn them, and that's a great thing. So I just was looking around, well, what, what is vocabulary? And I found this nice definition by Camille and Hebert, generally defined as the knowledge of words and word meanings, and more specifically, we use vocabulary to refer to the kind of words that students must know to read increasingly demanding texts with comprehension. I was wondering what strategies you as teachers would actually have to try and teach vocabulary. You're actually teaching a language, so you've, you've got the whole breadth um, of looking at its usage, the language usage, getting people excited and involved in the, in the language. But if we're looking totally down onto, uh, onto the strategies, what can you actually use? And there are a variety um, which I found listed here in a reference from the, um, this was actually from the, the Review of Current Research on Vocabulary Instruction by the US National Reading Technical Assistance Center, what a mouthful, um, from 2010. And the sort of things that they're pu putting, um, putting to are, for example, yes, the direct instruction. You might be giving people lists, uh, etc., in terms of vocabulary that they need to, to learn. And Anderson and Nagy uh, point out in 1991 that there are precise words that students may need to know in order to comprehend a particular lesson or subject matter. Now, repetition, it's obviously the practice that you need, but it's not just repeating a multiple exposure. It's also doing it in an interesting way. And that's why I like your idea, actually, of the block. Usefulness. Students will always react. I react. If I need it, I find I learn something, if it's relevant to me. Uh, so usefulness is really quite a high, high element. I was also quite interested, actually, from what you were saying, Agnes, about structuring your lessons so that they had a particular focus and task. And again, that helps with the learning process, having a framework within which to learn. But really the most important one is the active engagement. If you're actively involved in trying to use the language and trying to expand your vocabulary, you are more likely to pick up things and teach them and learn them. I love your example of computer technology. And then there's the other aspect which is the incidental learning. And that is when you're reading a newspaper article or you're trying to get into a particular area. I, I read, because um, I'm bilingual English German, I read Der Spiegel. The key element, though, is that you can't just depend on a single method to actually teach vocabularies. So even though I'm going to be talking about roots and branches as a book, it should be seen as a tool that you, would, you might have um, in your whole portfolio. So what tools do you have? There's obviously reading, exercises, role play, video, and then ultimately you'll be looking at having some form of reference that you can refer to at some point. In terms of reference sources, uh, we obviously have the dictionaries and the glossaries, the encyclopedias, etc. Language apps feature so much nowadays. Are there any other resources that I might have omitted in this particular point? Songs. Songs. Excellent. I hadn't thought of that, but yes, that's a very powerful one. Any others? 
any authentic material, really. Authentic so material. What, what do you... Poems? Poems? Yes. So thank you for those, uh, for those two. So there are, of course, an existing range of books um, that you can use. And I've just listed five here. And the interesting thing is that most of them seem to present the vocabulary in terms of themed areas. So it's going to the airport, going to the shops, looking at a particular area, going to work, working, etc. And yes, a number of the books, especially the, the ones by, is it Eliana Korbakov? who include practical examples and exercises that the students can work through, where they can try and start to use that vocabulary that they're trying to, to learn. But the difficulty is that when you're doing that, you, you really have an emphasis on this recall vocabulary, the vocabulary that you've learned and that you can necessarily apply. And there is another form of vocabulary which you might call recognition vocabulary where it's not the word itself, but it might have been the way the word has been used in other circumstances, or the way that it's actually mutated in the language. The book, French Roots and Branches, deals simultaneously with getting a recall vocabulary, but also having a recognition vocabulary. Now, at this moment, vocabulary can actually be quite boring when you're thinking about it, so I'd like to move on and just tell you a bit about the author, who's Gareth, Dr. Gareth Jones. Now, he was a Welshman. He was born in Wales in 1933. And he won a scholarship to go to Christ College. And we have to remember, at the time when he was born, you were discouraged from, uh, from speaking Welsh in all walks um, of life. And this is something that was really ingrained uh, within his personality. He went on to study psychology uh, in London. And that's where he actually became quite interested in the way people were having recall and recognition vocabularies. He went on to teach as a master at Dulles College and then went into industry. But back in 1989, after having worked globally business, in business, he returned to Wales. And now in 1989, there's a totally different atmosphere there. Now the Welsh language is encouraged, Welsh culture is encouraged, and he threw himself back and wanted to give something back to the community. And you can see he became involved as chairman of the Neville Hall and District NHS Trust, director of the Welsh National Opera, I mean, what a prestigious position, and chair of several trusts. But he also learnt relearned Welsh uh, and developed a deep interest in the particular language. Now the defining moment in his understanding of the Welsh language came on a train from London to Newport where he was reading a transcript of a text prepared by a prominent Welsh language presenter uh, on the BBC and he became aware of the construct of the language and the significance of having a root structure where you're starting off with the root word and looking at the way that that might evolve. And it's out of that that he developed the Welsh Roots and Branches book. And that book, first published in 1998 and re uh, reprinted in 2005, has been extremely successful uh, in terms of Welsh teaching within, um, within the Welsh community. But having developed the Welsh Roots book, he was thinking, well, there are other languages where you could use a similar sort of structure. And French and German were the two that he was uh, particularly interested in. And so he went on uh, a four years long research program himself uh, to look at how he could develop this within French language. Just reiterate, French Roots and Branches clearly complements other contributions by a range of publishers, and it's aimed at enlarging recall and recognition vocabulary of learners of the French language. Now this is really the sort of thing that you know in terms of your language teaching. So looking at French having had its origin in the Volga Latin, and then mutating and evolving as some of the pronunciations have come in from the tribes that were actually existing within the French area, and you had the morphing into the current modern language. But you will see that if you're starting off with a, a root word, uh, you've got the modifications that incur to give you a whole range of different meanings. And in these examples, I've given you both the French and the Latin, starting off with, is it Sida? Is that the correct pronunciation, Agnes? Sida, the first one? Sidi. Sidi. Thank you. And in two, if you do it the other way around, if you're looking at portare uh, in Latin, you're looking at porter, porter, sorry, porter in French. And again, you know, some of the meanings that come out are quite, are quite unusual. So the book is based on taking a particular word and trying to look at the different words and usages that come out um, of that. And again, looking at patre and maître uh, in these two examples. Now, the book itself has 439 
root words uh, within it. And based on the extensive entomological uh, research, uh, the extended use of each word is explored. Sometimes it's half a page uh, for some words. For others, it can go over three or four pages as they're very rich uh, in terms of their, their origin. And the idea is that what you're trying to do is actually widen the, reading, uh, the reader's learning experience. An example uh, is Dentre, uh, looking at the extended use of this particular word. And I've just taken a few examples from page two or three of this, where the word might have actually been used and developed. And you can see, so you're looking at stillborn, through to birth, birth rate, place of birth. Those are all phrases that, that come in in a whole variety of different applications within your, your wider vocabulary and learning as you go through. But the easiest thing to do is actually to demonstrate certain pages of the book. And rather than make it that I tell you what we're going to be looking at, I thought we'd choose a letter between A and V, because those are the letters of the words that we've got starting. So could I have, you're smiling very nicely, the lady with the red hair there, can you give me a letter somewhere between A and V? A and V. L. Yes. L. <laughs> L. Okay, L. And could somebody please give me a number between 1 and 12? 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's always difficult, isn't it? Just the one off the page. Either 9. So it's quite a short, short entry for to read. But just have a look. So imagine that you're browsing and you're just trying to, to think about how these might fall. Now, if I was picking this up, you know, I wouldn't necessarily expect to find some of those words or, or, or derivations. It would be unexpected new things that, I would, um, that would have I would find. But my question to you, really, is if you're presented with something like this as a resource, how would you actually use this within a lesson? Is it something that you could use usefully within a lesson? So could I have a first suggestion, please? Um, I think it's good because you'd get something similar in a dictionary if you looked it up. A word is quite overwhelming. And mm -hmm. There's lots and lots of very closely related bits of information, but they do find it interesting that it's maybe a bit too much. And I think with that, you could make a real point about how word families and their relationships and things like that, with that much more clearly and, and effectively than, than using stuff that already exists. Okay. Thank you. Is there another comment? Penny? Um, I would actually not give them that first. I would put the word, the verb, Leo, and then get them to. So they have to find out. And then give them, and they probably come up with, uh, hopefully, 60% of what they do. <laughs> 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 and if they don't, just do it. That's a, that's a lovely idea. That's a, yes? I would ask them to make sentences, mm -hmm. also creative sentences, yes. uh, using imagination or reality, yes. uh, and see what comes up. When they use imagination, they comes up with things very, very nice. Right. Very appropriate use of language. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, that would fit in with your blogs as well, wouldn't it? But do you think you could use it with? Well, with blogs yeah, I so? like the fact that you've got the French and the English. Yes. It's quite sometimes difficult uh, yeah. to find maybe a few English like that. So yeah, I mean, it might be a bit overwhelming for uh, for beginners, but I can see yeah. that for. Uh, it I think it definitely is for for people who've already got a basic grasp yeah. and they're they're looking to ex expand. Yeah their vocabulary. So, but sorry. maybe you can... Sorry. Sorry, sorry, I'll come back to you. Sorry. So I was just going to ask that in all of this, you know, thinking about what we actually do with it, do you not need to establish what the objective actually is of the task, of the lesson, what, you know, what is, I haven't quite understood just yet, what the kind of objective of it is, is it just to expand the language, or is it to be able to see links between different words? What is it that you're trying to get them to do? I think the, the, idea, the idea is to extend vocabulary, the use of the language, and to introduce you to words that you might not necessarily, or phrases that you might not necessarily have thought of. What was the one that you had about uh, somebody translating something directly into English? Leave me alone, partir myself. Leave, leave me alone, and uh, trying to do it directly in French. In this way, you actually see particular phrases that you wouldn't necessarily encounter to say particular, uh, particular things. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting, and, and to that idea of being able to guess what a word is, but not have really any knowledge of it beforehand. Yes. But, but you need a lot of exposure to a language to develop that naturally. Yeah. This sort of speeds up that level of exposure to, to be able to guess. Because obviously, I, I speak Spanish, so I can read French quite. I can understand yes. uh, written French, but that took me a long time to get the Spanish knowledge. 
Whereas this, this um, yes. would speed that up in a way that a normal list, where it's like, I don't know, uh, pet accessories or something, they, they were related to a pet concept, but they're not related, they don't help you understand it, this recognition, mm. what you call it, recognition knowledge. Yes. Um, it is something that, that I can see why it would develop that, and why that would be useful. Uh, for useful in what context? Or when you're reading, it's just like it's just you don't. a reference resource yes. as to have along with other activities and other lessons. Yes. Are you proposing to make lessons out of this book? Well, I think I think we're coming to the nub of the matter. Is how would this be used? Sorry, or did you want to answer? Did you want to comment no, on that? I just want to contribute to this because I think we're getting to the core of this whole issue. The one thing that strikes you straight away looking at it with teachers' eyes is the complexity increasing, um, both from left to right as well as from top to the bottom. So in other words, what that means in terms of usage pedagogically is that the use the idea of roots and branches, in other words, of a lexical tree, um, and start with basics, um, and basic maybe nouns, basic verbs, etc., and, and sort of expand into what are actually fixed expressions uh, at the very end. And for a user, that means that they become used to the idea of having we had fiche vocabulaire, you know, when I was learning French. Um, so you would start with a fiche like this and actually add yourself so that it becomes learner centered and learner focused. A young learner might start with basic vocabulary to do with meal and then at the very advanced level um, actually have proverbs, sayings relating them to the authors of the proverbs, you know, and which they so will from the potent did this one come from, etc. So there is complete open ended, but it will be learner driven. Mm -hmm. And that immediately made me think of corpus. This is kind of crying out for um, a corpus based development in, in the way that we have, um, you know, corpus based learner material now, so that uh, the frequency and the, the frequency the, the chronology of introducing vocabulary is actually based on what happens in the real language. And the most frequent occurrences of any verb der derivation of uh, word derivation of here would come up first. And the least frequent one would, would come for at the bottom for the very advanced uh, I'd like to pick up your point again because it is a critical one that I was trying to, to think about um, because I have to think about my, uh, my author and, and how are they going to market it? And, and what is going to be the audience that this is, this is aimed for? Um, now, I think if you've got a really dedicated student who's very enthusiastic about learning the language, there are some there, you know, they would go to something like this, they would go to it and they would browse it. But the reality is probably that it will not suit most students as a self-motivational thing. However, um, the thing that I'm getting out of the conversations here is that it would actually be a useful tool that the teacher could use um, to pick up, say, on, on occasions, one or two of these particular pages and use those as the basis or the foundation for an exercise, but you would have to be setting the objective in your mind as to what you're trying to set uh, on that front. Because there's, there's lots of, like, I mean, I think the lecture, like, uh, if, you know, if you've already learned the lecture as a reader, it actually tells you what a proofreader does more clearly, even to an English speaker, really? than the word proofreader, because what's a proof, you know, yes. the child doesn't know what a proof is, they can see correct, read correct, read correct. <laughs> Yes, of course. So, so in the, it, 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 all those things that language does, like put, give you back your own language, or yes. show that sometimes French is more logical and easier than English, yes. or, or all things like a, a cassette reader. I think that's interesting that we call it a player, and mm. not that they would know what the one that is more. But there's all sorts of things mm. that, that and, and you don't know because a person could be a, a very high reader and love learning those other books yes. that most textbooks give you. Yeah. Blah blah, my pet, you know. Yeah. Um, so I, I think you, you would have to use it as a teacher selectively, but as an enrichment tool it is. to help. I mean, I teach in a school, so it can be different from university yeah. students, but, but I think it could get some sorts of people quite excited about language in the way that most vocabulary textbooks yes. offer to them. Yeah. So. Well, thank you. Uh, I'll take the last comment, because I'm aware of the time. We need to get on. Oh, sorry. I'll make it quick. Right. Um, I think that this could be used really, really well, um, preparing kids for their GCSE exams for the reading paper. So you think Actually, even at the GCSE yeah, level, that would work? Yeah, I think it start off quite in, in a kind of creative way and get them to do the branch, um, the root, the branches, or give them the branches and they try to find the root or whatever. Uh, and then you could um, use it 
I mean, obviously you would select yes. the bit that you wanted, and then you could use it with a reading question. Uh -huh. Because I, I've been trying to teach my kids to get the adjective from the noun or the verb, and, and that's how I think that could work. All right, OK. Um, I need some short answers from you as well as Nodi, and that is now, if you're, let's say this tool was available to you, what would be the most useful form for you to have it? What would you what would you give to the class? What would you need to have to give to the class? Are there any activities that come with it? Is there like an activity book? No. No, so it's, so it's just a reference resource. It is, it is a reference resource, yeah. So in that case, for me, it would be like an online link okay. that my school had paid for that I could then say, you know, right. two days to say that. I mean, I have to generate a PDF to get this book ready for a printer, but if you've got a PDF, you could actually make a person Buys the physical book, they could also have the PDF ready. And there, of course, you could print off individual pages. Yeah, uh, just a thing. Do you think that way. would be would that be useful? I think you need a way of getting a small amount of it to your students yes. at a time. Right. It could be you for the copy of one of the book, or it could be a PDF which is cheaper for Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Or even that you, yeah, you could just link to the uh, particular pages. Yeah. I think. That answers my particular questions. I'll come to the conclusions now. I mean, we're looking at a publication date of the 1st of September. And do I take it that some of you would actually be interested in learning more about it in the future? And please do get in touch with me. Uh, you'll have my list. Uh, my name is part of the listing. So in conclusion, I hope that I've actually managed to get a message across that French roots and branches can be used at a number of different levels can be used from leisure or bedside reading, but really for the very enthusiastic learners, to teachers who could use it as part of their courses by developing the root and branch system further. And I've really got that feedback from you. I'm really grateful that we've had such a positive, uh, constructive feedback on that. And I'll just leave you with that particular conclusion. So whether for leisure or study, French roots and branches is intended to be both informative and entertaining, as it encourages the students at, of all levels to really get inside the languages. I mean, that's the thing that we enjoy, isn't it? Getting inside the language and learning it in a new and innovative manner. Thank you for your time and for the feedback. That was brilliant for someone who's not really familiar with it. Thanks a lot.